Hello. Okay, so today you're reading two writers again. Uh, Virginia Woolf with A Room of One's Own and James Baldwin's Sunny's Blues. So, not a direct, obvious connection between the two, although they are both dealing with uh, complex social issues. Um, on the one hand, there is uh, Virginia Woolf who's dealing with the issue of a woman's equality she's writing about. She's writing in the 1920s, and then James Baldwin's Sunny's Blues is dealing with um, kind of race relations in America in the 1950s and um, 1940s, 1950s, uh, and also dealing with uh, drug addiction. So, lots of light, fluffy reading for us. Um, Virginia Woolf's, um, uh, she is a known primarily as being a novelist, but also an essay writer. So she wrote. A number of brilliant novels that are categorized as modernist so she was part of the modernist movement and the modernists were writing um, often just before the first world war and after the first world war in between the, the war periods and uh, she would use a stream of consciousness writing and you can see a version of that in this essay as well. So a stream of consciousness writing, if you're not familiar with it, is meant to kind of mimic the, accurately mimic the internal meanderings of the mind. So if you've ever paid close attention to the way that your mind works, you will notice that it has a tendency to go all over the place and jump from one thought to the next and then be taken away by something you just saw over there which reminds you of something else that happened yesterday which makes you think about that article that you were reading just the other day which in turn makes you think about that thing you were meant to do today when you get home but you mustn't forget to do that although wait hang on a moment so okay you get the point so uh, writers who use stream of consciousness have to be very careful in how they do it so it doesn't come across just sounding like you know pure nonsense. Uh, Virginia Woolf thankfully was a uh, master of this form and so if you enjoy stream of consciousness writing then you should enjoy Virginia Woolf. Uh, she's also this uh, essay of hers she is considering the problem of inequality between men and women. She's writing this uh, almost a century ago now, not quite, but almost. She's walking around Oxford and she is trying to understand why it is that women have less money and power essentially in society than men do. Um, and she comes towards a number of conclusions and she comes up with a, not exactly a full-scale solution to the problem, but she describes how when she was able to due to some good fortune, I suppose. Um, she inherited some money, which would pay her a little bit of money each month. She was then able to start writing. She had her own room, she had her own space, she was no longer dependent. And so this allowed her to, uh, allowed her intellectual gifts to flourish. Um, she kind of became back into popularity again in the 60s and 70s with later uh, feminist movements that took place uh, long after her death and uh, that was really when she became kind of famous. Um, a lot of her writing doesn't deal with that, that issue, she deals with all kinds of different things. Um, but the story, the essay that we're reading, uh, A Room of One's Own, is one of her most famous essays and uh, I think you may find it interesting. Uh, moving on, Sunny's Blues by James Baldwin. James Baldwin was a excellent fiction writer. He also did write essays um, and he was writing in the first half up into the early sort of 60s, uh, late 60s in the United States um, and he was an African-American who wrote about the African-American experience in America and the sort of fraught race relations that he had experienced. Um, this story is set in Harlem and it's about a brother, two brothers, uh, Sonny and the narrator. And um, it's, I, I've given this story to many classes, many different times. People almost always find this one of their favorite stories just because it's very 
moving, very beautiful. It doesn't really, it's not heavy handed in dealing with politics, kind of the politics and race relations is there in the background, but at the foreground, in the center of the story is this very highly emotionally charged relationship between the two brothers and learning about their life and learning about the nature of pain and how people try to deal with pain, whether it's through drug use in some cases or whether they're able to transform their pain into something more productive in the case of creating music or art, uh, how family history gets passed on and how none of us really begin just with our life, but we carry the lives of people who've come before us. So it's, it's beautiful and quite moving. I hope you enjoy it. And I look forward to reading your responses. Again, you can please read both of them. Mention them if you can, but you can go into depth in one or the other if that makes more sense for your post. Thank you.